everyone and welcome to Crim2 News at Noon. I'm Laura Papetti. Thank you for being with us today. In a Crim2 exclusive, a Spokane woman is speaking out for the first time after a man stole her car in the middle of the day, dragging her down the street in the process. This afternoon, Crim2's Nicole Hernandez is now sharing her story. That's right. So 35 year old Bobby McBride is, is sitting in jail this morning. Police arrested him on Saturday. He's accused of a carjacking and the car that he carjacked actually crashed right here on North Cannon Street. So take a look at this map here. This shows kind of exactly where all of this happened. This happened Thursday after Spokane police got a call from a business on East Fifth Avenue. McBride was refusing to leave the business. Minutes later, he stole Irina Stovba's car while she was delivering groceries. She had minor injuries after McBride dragged her along the street. Panic. My first thing was to go run after him and I did. I, I ran. I grabbed the door handle on the um, passenger side screaming stop well, like well, you're stealing my car. So using a stranger's phone, Stova called 911 and then her husband, who was able to track her stolen car and cell phone using an app. Police say they tracked McBride four miles away to a neighborhood in West Central here in Spokane. 30 minutes after that hijacking, police got a call saying that there was this car crash here on Cannon Street. That's what you can see here on your screen right now. Uh, the police were able to connect the car in that crash to the car that was stolen. So McBride was able to run away from that scene, but unfortunately for him, he did leave a backpack in the car that had documents with his name and his birthday on them. It's good feeling knowing that he is caught, yeah. um, you know, because this could happen to anybody. So McBride is a nine time convicted felon and was released from prison just one week before the alleged carjacking. So Stova says that she does understand it's partially her mistake for leaving her car running and unattended. That's why we're talking about this specifically today, because with colder temperatures, we're seeing more frost on cars. So like, you know, Use a scraper, definitely use a scraper. Police say though, just don't leave your car unattended. If you have to even sit inside your car, wait the 10 minutes to let your car defrost while you're here. In Spokane, I'm Nicole Hernandez. Nicole, thank you. We're gonna take a moment right now at 12.03. Live look overlooking downtown Spokane. A little bit of a gray day out there. Certainly frosty this morning. Meteorologist Jeremy Legu is in the Creme 2 Outdoor Weather Center. Jeremy, uh, I, she was just talking about going out to your car and it's frosted. Full frost on my car this morning, but feels a whole lot warmer than it did a few hours ago. Yeah, I mean, to put this in perspective, we are a whole lot warmer than we were just a few hours ago or when Laura was starting that frosty car and we're still barely above freezing 33 degrees. And if you're looking for a solution to a, a cold car as you kick things off in the morning and having to sit there while it warms up, that's why I'm wearing this coat. That was my solution this morning going, Ooh, it's cold. And so I got through it. I love cold weather. I hate being cold. That's just the nature of the beast. 34 in Sandpoint, 34 in Coeur d'Alene. You're already up to 40 in Moses Lake. We're going to struggle to get there in Spokane, 35 in Wenatchee. As we move into the afternoon, oh, it's looking less and less like we're going to hit that 40 degree mark because of this high thin layer of clouds that's moving in. So bundle up. Expect to spend most of the day in the mid 30s across the region, despite the lack of a very thick cloud cover. So what we can see is that things are eventually going to move in. Apparently it's not working. Uh, so clouds build throughout the day. Clouds build tomorrow. We'll see the chance of snow Thursday night into Friday. And coming up, I'm going to walk you through that chance and let you know why I think we could actually see our first snow of the season here in Spokane. All right, my friend, we like our puffy coats around here. OK, COVID-19 booster shots could be available for all adults by the end of the week. The FDA could authorize Pfizer's booster shot as soon as tomorrow. So the U.S. averaging more than 82,000 new COVID-19 cases a day. That is up 11 percent over the daily average just two weeks ago. Health officials say the extra protection could be key to stopping the rising case numbers as we certainly do head into the holiday season. When we look back on this, we will see that boosters are likely a very critical part of the immunization regimen. The FDA says its vaccine advisors will not meet to discuss the matter, meaning the FDA's decision on authorization could happen at any minute. The booster is currently available to anyone 65 or older or people who are considered at high risk for the virus. 
And two years ago today, China recorded the world's first known case of COVID-19. Now, since then, the virus has killed more than 5 million people globally and infected nearly 255 million people. CBS's Ian Lee reports. Even as China vaccinates millions against COVID, the origins of the virus remain a mystery. Efforts to discover how it started have come up empty handed. Beijing is stonewalling international investigators, barring any further visits to Wuhan, where the pandemic emerged two years ago. The COVID pandemic. Chinese President Xi Jinping hasn't left the country since the outbreak. This week, he and President Biden held a virtual meeting with the virus, one of many topics on the table. It was a good meeting. We got a lot to follow up on. The two main theories continue to be COVID either jumped from animals to people in a local market or escaped from this Chinese lab, which was experimenting with a similar virus. Experts say we may never know the source of COVID-19, but the virus is still killing people around the world. In Russia, hospitals struggle to keep patients alive. Each day is deadlier than the last. While in Germany, this intensive care unit is full and doctors worry how much longer they can cope. Parts of Europe have taken a tough line against the unvaccinated, with many countries imposing new restrictions in the run up to Christmas. Police in Austria are on the lookout for anyone unvaccinated. Those without the shot can't leave their homes except for work, food or medical reasons. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. All right, it is 12.07. Coming up next, we just had a two-hour event at Starbucks yesterday afternoon, all for Tom's Turkey Drive. So coming up, we'll show you the amazing turnout and how you can continue helping out.